Okay, something I've been kind of wanting to do for a while. Um, and it was spurred by the fact that there's a new Gettysburg game coming out based on the Blind Swords system, which uh, is a Civil War system that um, a couple of more recent games in the past, let's say five or six years probably, have used. Um, I'm thinking in particular of Stonewall Sword from Revolution Games and um, Longstreet Attacks, which uh, does a second day battle. Um, and I think there's been one since then on P Ridge, or I think after Stonewall Sword, there was one on P Ridge, and then um, I think that was Thunder in the Ozarks, and then uh, Longstreet Attacks, and then Forthcoming is the most fearful sacrifice from Flying Pig Games, which is a treatment of Gettysburg. So, and it uses a Rick Barber map. Um, the late, great Rick Barber uh, is known for his maps of Gettysburg that have a very um, illustrative quality to them. They are not a typical, what I would say, a typical war game map. They have a very, uh, you know, most most typical war game maps, um, people might think of something more classic like a SPI era map uh, when you're thinking of hex encounter war games. Um, you know, for a certain generation of war game players, this is the kind of map that comes to mind. Rick Barber's maps are very much not in that vein. Um, I do not have one of Rick Barber's maps set out here yet. Um, there is, you can see down there on the floor, I've got a stack of other maps that I'm going to get to in a later video. And uh, the later video is going to include all of Rick Barber's maps. Um, what I wanted to do was start initially with all of the one mapper uh, Gettysburg games that I have, um, including I think most from this stack here. There's one more over on one of my other tables. Um, from uh, Clash of Giants. And then uh, another video we'll get into doing um, comparisons of the big monster games um, side by side. So those will, I'll try and split the videos up so it's not um, you know an hour and a half of map rambling. Um, but, so I thought I'd start with the single map games. There are some single map games um, from Rick Barber. That one there happens to be, I think, the Longstreet Attacks Rick Barber map from Revolution Games. But I'm going to do a third video um, that's going to have all of Rick Barber's maps in it. Um, the reason I'm not doing that now is because I have not received a Most Fearful Sacrifice from Flying Pig Games yet. It is in the process of shipping somewhere in the about-to-start-shipping process. Um, I have not heard anything yet about them actually starting to ship out yet, just that they were on their way to... Quartermaster Logistics, or whoever it is that's doing the actual shipping, um, the pallets were on their way there, and they will start shipping once they get them. So um, once I receive that, then I'm going to do a, a whole video just on Rick Barber's various Gettysburg maps that he's done um, over the years. And I'll do, so just to kind of lay things out, um, these are, this is the maps for a most hallowed ground, and over there is Last Chance for Victory. These are the uh, MMP uh, titles from the gamers um, that cover Gettysburg, the two different sort of eras. So I'm going to do a comparison of those maps. And then I'm going to compare, um, you can see down there, Three Days of Gettysburg. Um, and then what you can't see is the one of those TSR boxes on top is a Terrible Swiss Sword. I'm going to do a comparison of Three Days of Gettysburg with Terrible Swiss Sword, which are the GBACW games uh, from the Civil War. And I'll do a, a comparison of those as well. So, but starting with the one mapper Gettysburg games, um, and these are all the Gettysburg games I have. There are obviously more Gettysburg games out there. I just don't have all of them, but I do have a lot of them. Um, so I pulled out any any game that had um, some version of a Gettysburg map, and the one mappers include lots of more specific parts of the Gettysburg battlefield, and not the whole thing. Um, indeed. I could include Longstreet Attacks down there, uh, but like I said, I'm saving that for the Rick Barber video. But it, but it is a one map uh, map of a portion of the Gettysburg battlefield and not the whole thing. So uh, to kind of start off with the one map games, um, we have right here 
the map for Avalon Hills Gettysburg, um, sort of the original and greatest. I think the original version of this was probably from like the 1960s, maybe. Um, the version that I have is the 125th anniversary edition from um, 87 or whenever that was. Uh, and so I don't know if the earlier version used the same map, but this is what this version uses. And it is what I would consider a um, classic map of the Avalon Hill era uh, of games, which Avalon Hill used um, a lot of these hand-painted maps like this. It is also mounted, um, like many Avalon Hill games of the era. In fact, I blame Avalon Hill for leading people to think that war game maps should be mounted when the reality is that most war game maps are not mounted. Um, but Avalon Hill was able to do that uh, because they were a publishing and printing company that could do this all themselves um, and not have to pay any sort of exorbitant prices to have a third-party vendor uh, mount all their boards for them and print everything for them. So um, there's a reason why their Avalon Hill was known for mounting everything and spoiled people into thinking that, why, aren't my, why isn't my, you know, uh, five-map Gettysburg monster game mounted? That's crap, you know, which is, just, you know, it's stupid. It's, the, not, it's not how things usually were. Uh, just Avalon Hill led people to think that that's the way things should be. So, uh, minor rant aside there, this is a typical uh, art style um, of a lot of Avalon Hill games with these hand-painted and very handsome-looking um, maps. And you can see here um, the forests and kind of hills, elevations and stuff are just hand-painted on here, literally. Um, you can almost see the brush strokes. And... Uh, I don't know, I have not actually played this game, so, you know, in terms of how the terrain actually works, um, there is a key, you know, that explains that you have clear hexes, hill hexes, um, rough hill hexes, etc. Uh, so, you know, those will clearly have an effect on the game. And little round top and big round top are your rough hill hexes, whereas cemetery hill, just more normal hill hexes. Um, curious to see something that always shows up. There's the unfinished railroad, but I don't actually see specific terrain around the railroad cut itself. And, you know, the, the, the railroad cut was a famous part of the first day's battle at Gettysburg. Um, and your larger map tactical games usually have some kind of special terrain rules around those, um, the railroad cut hexes or hex sides. Um, this is a particularly larger scale tactical Gettysburg game. So, you know, a higher, higher scale. Um, so I don't see here anything specific to those unfinished railroad hex sides or anything like that. There may be rules in the game for it. Um, I just don't know, but the map itself is um, I think uh, one of the better looking uh, single map Gettysburg maps out there. And it's very simple, but um, very pleasing to look at. Uh, you can compare it to another Avalon Hill title here. This is Little Round Top, which is kind of buried under a stack of boxes here. This is kind of a mini game um, from Avalon Hill. And I want to say, let's look, 80, early 80s, 82. Um, and maybe a version that actually came out before that. This may have been later um, than, you know, when the game originally was released. Uh, but compare it, compare the artwork um, on this particular map to the Gettysburg map there, which, you know, even has, like, it's got branding and everything on it, you know, the classic, that, that, uh, that classic Gettysburg font. I don't know what that font is, but I'm pretty sure, um, I don't know, I've seen it used... I feel like 
maybe the Kansas Jayhawks basketball team kind of has the Kansas has that kind of font to it. Um, regardless, it's you know that has branding and stuff on it. But this is much simpler um, in terms of art style, and you know this is little round top is the game, and it's almost difficult to tell if you don't know your Gettysburg geography. Um, you know what you're even looking at, <laughs> so it is. You know, just all these this just green mess of woods with some openings. Looks like some stone walls running along there. Some some actual rocks as opposed to stone walls over here. More rocks, more stone walls. Um, I mean, you can look and see. Yeah, rock hex, stone wall, rock hex side, picket fence. Are there picket fences on here somewhere? Did I miss the picket fences? Yeah, hard to see where there are. Oh, there's some picket fencing. Okay. Um, but, you know, this is the 20th main um, along Chamberlain Spur. It looks like it's broken down by company. Um, just the scale this is at. This is another one I have not played. I actually just got this. Um, and uh, so it is also, because it's Avalon Hill, it's also on a mounted board, although of cheaper cheaper quality, a little bit warped. Um, the little mini games from Avalon Hill, the boards were not the greatest quality. Um, I'm thinking in particular of um, Robin Hood up there, uh, which is another old Avalon Hill mini game that has the kind of warped board on it um, but it is the same sort of board as this little, little small board and they've managed to as, as small as this board is they've still managed to put a table on there as well um, you know I guess even this board had the, the time record track but no actual tables on there um, and you know there, I guess there's branding there too look they've got the name hard to read because uh, it's just outlined um, but much different artwork style. This, you know, again, has the very painterly illustrated quality to it. This, yeah, not so much. Very functional, simple, um, colored terrain with little openings and some scribbled rocks on there. And, uh, you know, that's where all your companies go. Um, you can contrast that then as we move over here to Devil's Den. And uh, this is another Avalon Hill title. And also from the early 80s, uh, let's see, there's the, the box. I, I always love the cover on this. Um, and just the, I don't know, the big red devil's den, and then just the, the dramatic picture of the Union soldiers defending. Um, although the painting, this painting may actually be guys that are up on Little Round Top as opposed to Devil's Den. I'm not sure. I need to look and see. Um, what the painting actually is. And I'm looking on here for a date. I don't remember. I think this is another early or late 80s game. It was one of the first war games that I ever played. Um, and I bought this when I was in high school in the early 90s. But I don't believe it was brand new at the time. There it is. 1985. Okay. So there, I think there have been reprintings of it, but originally issued and originally printed in 1985. Uh, so, but this map I think is very attractive looking. Um, again, it is mounted. It's two mounted boards um, that are the higher quality boards, similar to the Gettysburg board over there. Um, but this is the, the colors are pleasing, and they are, um, you know, kind of how I think of the Valley of Death and Little Round Top and Devil's Den um, in my mind's eye of what of the color of that terrain, which is heavily forested Big Round Top um, and then heavily forested around the, the, the um, sides and back of Little Round Top, but, you know, open kind of rocky brown and gold and... Um, less green terrain through the Valley of Death and between Devil's Den and Little Round Top. Um, so, I don't know. I think they did 
a good job on this with the colors and the artwork itself uh, is also very good. You know, there's, again, it's that hand painted kind of stuff. So you can see the boulders of Devil's Den here um, are just hand painted on in the same way. There's the ridge, Hulk's Ridge there, um, Rose Woods, and the Triangle Field. Uh, so like at this level, and I think this is another company level treatment, um, similar to the little round top game here. Um, so you've got, you know, all the landmarks, um, the slaughter pen, the Valley of Death, uh, stuff labeled here on the map, a little round top, um, Chamberlain Spur, because uh, the, the 20th Main was down here on this, the wooded part of, you know, people, the, all the picturesque spots of Little Round Top are up here along the rocky face, and you've got the 44th New York Castle, you know, up here. Um, you've got the uh, Governor K. Warren statue, you know, perched on one of the rocks up here. So all the most famous vistas sort of post-battle are out here um, on this face of Little Round Top that looks across to Devil's Den and the famous boulders. But Chamberlain, where he was the actual, you know, defense of the, the Union left uh, was down here in Chamberlain Spur and is in a, in a much more heavily wooded part of uh, Little Round Top. Um, so, you know, the famous pictures aren't taken back here. Everybody's up on the crest looking out in the gorgeous vista over um, southern Pennsylvania. So, anyway, this um, this map, I just, I've always liked this map. I don't know if I'm just fond of it because it was my first war game that I ever played. Um, but it does, it's, it's clear and evocative, and as someone who's been many times on this particular terrain at Gettysburg, uh, it's very familiar to me, and uh, I feel that it's fairly accurate in that regard as well, too. Um, I'm sure there's probably some serious cart cartography nerds uh, that would say, no, actually, uh, you know, the distances aren't quite right between this and that and the other thing. Well, I don't care. You know, it looks good to me. Um, next up, we have here the Mark Herman uh, Gettysburg game. This was in an issue of C3I Magazine. They later released a, uh, a deluxe boxed version of it that had um, a little mounted board. It's only... Um, you know, this tiny map, but they went ahead and mounted it for this sort of deluxe treatment for C3I. Um, as you can see down there is the, the box underneath. I won't try and get to it, but there it is. Um, this is a, you know, a much more modern production, um, and particularly comparing it to, it's similar in size to the old Avalon Hill Gettysburg map. Um, However, the, the, the style of it is very different. Um, this is obviously going for a historical uh, map. Um, I don't want to say, I'm trying to think of the particular type of map this is. A, a historic kind of elevated, um, you know, that shows elevations and things like that uh, in great detail and plots of land and stuff like that. So almost like a, you know, an historic surveyor's map or something like that. It may actually be a historical map um, that Mark Herman opted to use. You know, I didn't, I've played this game. I did not, and it's very simple, you know, quick treatment. Um, one of those that's like a s simple to play, but deep uh, strategically um, or tactically. I didn't read though about what, how, you know, the artwork behind the map. Um, and what was particular, particularly selected for it, but uh, it very much looks like they've just reproduced a historical plot map of Gettysburg and the surrounding, you know, some of the surrounding terrain um, for the game. And uh, I don't have a problem with that. I think for a game of this scale, um, you know, that's a fairly small, just a ma simple magazine game, um, I think it's kind of cool to do, uh, you know, a historical sort of sepia-toned map um, of the historic terrain around Gettysburg. Um, you know, so long as the gameplay-related terrain is clear, um, and I think it is, you know, you can see the hexes here, and the, you know, there's no key on here. My recollection is that there is kind of either hill or not uh, in terms of terrain. There's not a lot of nuance 
um, to the terrain in this game, just in the scale that the game is set at. Um, so it's simple, you know, the elevated hexes are the darker hexes, where you've got ridges and or hills. Um, I don't even remember if like woods have any effect in this game or if it's strictly, you know, are you on a hill position or not? Um, so, you know, it's simple, very historic look to it. Um, and uh, I'm okay with that. Some people might prefer not just reproducing a historical map, especially because, you know, like the details are not super clear on there. Um, in terms of, you know, all those, like, all the elevation lines and all that kind of stuff that don't actually add anything to gameplay. Some people might say, no, I don't want all that on there. It's too cluttered and confusing and whatever else. But, um, you know, I think it's fine. I think the, the parts that affect gameplay are presented clearly and everything else is just, you know, visual noise that you're either going to love or hate. So, anyway, moving on to... In magnificent style here. This is Pickett's Charge, and this is a solitaire game um, from Worthington Games that they did kind of a deluxe treatment of um, in the past uh, two years or so. Maybe it came out last year. I can't remember exactly. Um, but this is obviously specifically about Pickett's Charge. The map represented here is literally just all of the brigades um, that take part in Pickett's Charge and the field, section of field that they crossed. This is not particularly accurate. Um, it's not a simulation of Pickett's Charge. It is a representation of Pickett's Charge in a game form. Um, the, the, the way that the Confederates are organized, the units are organized as they cross the field is not how it was historically. Um, there's not the shifting of positioning that the troops had to do historically where um, the Confederates had to, came out in a line and had to continually shift over and over to converge um, in a point at the cop, cops of trees. This just literally runs them all straight across um, two portions of the line. It, what it represents, what, what it succeeds in representing is how the forces were concentrated at the point at which they hit the Union line. Um, that is basically more accurate. And so to get this proper concentration of forces to work with the way the game is designed, they didn't allocate for the actual position of the troops as they started the march. It really only represents what you got when they finished the march, which is here. You can see the Union line um, and the stone wall here at the angle, um, and then the rest of the Union line out here. Um, so it, again, this is so this is not simulation representation, but I think it's kind of cool. Um, just to see it at this scale, uh, which is, you know, much closer. You've got the historic fence lines where they were, um, and, and the, the, and then, you know, the, the bliss farm, like the historic buildings here, the Kadori farm, uh, the Emmitsburg road crossing here famously. Um, and the game allocates for like here, you know, these, these there's some cover here, so you, you don't take as many hits if your units are in these particular spaces. But you continue to take hits, uh, you know, as you're advancing your troops. Um, things are obviously rougher in here. They're going to be take a penalty and take more hits. Um, the key to the game is, you know, you can't just like sit and have your guys kind of hold, hold back and try and if you if you try and get a perfect charge all the way across, your troops are going to get annihilated before they ever get there. So it's kind of like taking advantage of when you can move troops up with the least amount of damage um, and try and get get a breakthrough to the Union line. So again, but even that, again, it's not a simulation of crossing. It is very much a game um, about, you know, can you, uh, with some luck and proper maneuvering, get your guys to the Union line and have a chance of breaking through. Um, and so I, I think it's a lot of fun. Um, and so, but it is, yeah, you're not looking at a, you know, truly accurate representation of this portion of the battlefield. But in terms of the artwork of it, in terms of the, the, the recognizable landmarks of it, um, 
the kind of general representation of how some of those landmarks affected, uh, or how some of that terrain affected the units, um, the Confederates as they crossed that field against the Union position, um, it is, I think, well represented in the game. Uh, you know, and it, so it gives you, it definitely gives you a Pickett's Charge feel to it, uh, even if it's not a simulation in any way. So, um, and this also a mounted board. So a lot of these one mappers I have are mounted. Um, and, you know, so very nice, heavy board uh, that's not, not warped at all, lays flat really nicely. Uh, Worthington Games is good with that um, in terms of their mounted boards. Their, their Worthington Games components of their releases in the past several years have been very good. Um, so really cool. And lots of charts and tables on the map, too, which is sort of a lost art that I kind of miss. Um, Next up, we have Cemetery Hill. This is from the old um, SPI blue and gray quad. Uh, there are other titles on here. Here's Antietam and Shiloh. And you can barely read it there. It's upside down, but Chickamauga. Obviously, for the Gettysburg maps, so I'm just going to focus on the Cemetery Hill map. This uh, is not from the actual... This is from, you can see there, the SPI on the side, but this is from the TSR era of SPI. Um, but the maps are from the original, you know, quad game, perhaps from an issue of s and I don't remember. Um, but from the SPI title from an earlier era, I believe, um, I don't believe this is actually originally produced in the TSR era. Uh, but this is classic Redmond Simonson SPI era map here. Um, and, you know, there's not a whole lot to say about that. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I've always been kind of fond of these maps because they have, I don't know, they evoke a certain scholarly feel in me uh, when I see those old SPI maps. They are eminently functional. And a lot of people would probably say bland. But I don't know, the, the functionality of them has a certain elegance. Um, the, the font stuff, you know, the font choices, I always thought were kind of cool. Um, I don't know, they just, they just make me think, they, they make me think fondly of a very particular era of wargaming. And, you know, the charts and tables on there worked around the gray borders. Um, I don't know, it, it just, there's a certain fondness um, for me for this era of wargaming and uh I don't know, that's that's just how I feel about the the SPI maps but yeah I mean it is not this is not um particularly you know earth shattering or evocative or vivid artwork on here it is very functional very simple it's very clear where the towns are it's very clear where the ridges are very clear where the water is, very clear where the roads are. You know it's forest, you know it's ridge. Um, let's see, how do they do Devil's Den? The one drawback, it's kind of hard to read. <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the titles of the hills and terrain features and stuff are actually kind of difficult to see. So there's a little round top, round top. Yeah, because they didn't, I mean, little. it was just the round tops. I think there was little round top, and then, you know, we call it big round top, but they just call it round top. But, um, yeah. Cemetery Ridge. So, you know, Devil's Den just kind of worked into those two hexes, probably 920 is the other part of Devil's Den. So, you know, again, a very simple representation of the recognizable landmarks of Gettysburg. You know, there's the Chambersburg Pike coming in. Uh, the, the unfinished railroad and the railroad cut not even shown at all on this particular map. So um, the reason I'm mentioning that is because on a similar size map to this, and you, we may actually see it over here on the Across Five April's map, and we, we can move on to this. I don't want this video to drag on to an hour long uh, going over all these different maps, but um, this is Cross Five Aprils, which again is another like quad game, although this doesn't have another map on the back. But um, 
across five Aprils was a Victory Games title, which was also it was part of Avalon Hill, but it was their their Victory Games imprint. But um, this has Bull Run, Pea Ridge, Shiloh, Gettysburg, and Bentonville. Um, so actually not a quad game, but a five games. So you know, it's the five across five Aprils. Here's five battles. Convenient. Um, this also from the 80s, no, actually 90s, 1992. It was kind of right at the end of the Victory Games Avalon Hill era. Um, but this is Gettysburg, uh, you know, a, a different take uh, color-wise. Um, you've got definitely more of a varied color palette here. Um, it's not the most attractive map, but it is functional. Um, I think, for example, you know, the colors used here are more pleasing to the eye. The green here has kind of a sickly hue to it. I'm not sure how, how much that comes through um, on the, uh, the camera. But, you know, again, very functional. Um, this has a little more detail than some. There's Culp's Hill there, uh, or the Culp Farm, rather. Culp's Hill is there. Wolf Hill, you know, a larger kind of sampling of the terrain here instead of just the immediate Gettysburg terrain. You get Wolf Hill in there, not a lot of Gettysburg games. Well, one mappers will get that in there. Um, but there's Cemetery Ridge, the Clump of Trees, I think Swisher Farm. Nice. This So this has, in Rick Barber style. Rick Barber's maps have a lot of the individual farms and stuff called out on them. His his maps are great to to look at for all these little tiny details that you can kind of hunt down on the map. Um, and so this has a lot of those. This also gets covers you know more more of the recognizable landmarks of the Gettysburg battlefield, such as the Peach Orchard, the Wheat Field. There's Devil's Den. Weird that Devil's Den has that much tree cover around it. I feel like the Devil's Den hex itself there should probably be empty. Um, or should be clear or just, you know, have the the, the rough terrain there. Um, it's a little strange that they have this much that they have this much uh, tree cover right around it. Like there should kind of be open there um, through Plum Run in the Valley of Death uh, and the Slaughter Pen. Um, so a little weird. Um, so you know some of the all these all of these Gettysburg maps um, from these different eras have their own sort of little peccadillos to them, and so that's just something I've noticed there. You got Seminary Ridge. There's your unfinished railroad. I don't see any specific terrain around the railroad cut but there may be specific rules in the game. I've only played the Bentonville battle from this title. I have not actually played the Gettysburg battle from this title. There's Oak Hill and Barlow's Knoll, the famous indefensible Barlow's Knoll. So uh, th this this map is good um, in terms of covering all the landmarks and things like that. Um, just the, uh, the colors and the artwork a little a little less enthusiastic um, in terms of that. Uh, but, you know, it's got a good key on the map. You always want that. Your turn track. I feel like with the much, as much space as they had over there, they could have put some more charts and tables out there. You know, I'm just saying. Uh, and then we've got here the Guns of Gettysburg. And this is, I think, is that Mercury Games? I believe so. Yep. And this was from the designer that also did Napoleon's Triumph, which was considered kind of a masterpiece of design. This, uh, not quite as famous, but another one that took, um, and I tried to play this once and didn't know what the hell I was doing and was completely baffled by it and haven't revisited it. Um, but this is another one that people, I think, were also impressed with just in terms of... Um, Again, design, elegance, and uh, efficiency. But it is a very different 
system uh, in terms of how the units are represented, how the movement of the units is represented, and how their um, occupation of these spaces is represented. And so you can see the map is divided into these sections, and these circular points where all the sections meet are used very specifically in how units line up along these particular edges of these particular sections and how they interact with the units in every other particular section. It was very, very difficult to grasp. Um, but apparently is, again, kind of a... Uh, I keep using the term elegant, but that's not exactly the word that I want to use. But, I don't know, a very carefully refined vision of how the units interact in the game. And once you sort of figure that out, then it's intuitive, but it is not initially intuitive, if that makes any sense. But I'm not here to talk about exactly how the game plays. Uh, I'm here to talk about how the map looks. And the map is very green. <laughs> it is incredibly green. It is just green. And uh, I, it could have benefited from, I think, some other colors on it just to help uh, delineate some terrain. Um, you know, there. It's. I think even in the height of summer, when this battle was fought, uh, southern Pennsylvania is not just this uniformly green. Um, the major landmarks, you know, I mean, you, just looking at a map of Gettysburg, like if you see the town and you know which way is north, you can always figure it out where Cemetery Hill is going to be, Little Round Top is going to be, Big Round Top is going to be, Seminary Ridge, Cemetery Ridge, um, like you just kind of know, <laughs> you know, where those things are. And this, this is the same way. It's clear when you look at it. Yeah, you can tell where the round tops are. There's the town, Cemetery Ridge in between. Um, but color-wise, you know, if you don't know that stuff just intuitively, it would be nice to have some colors there just to kind of help sell it a little bit more. But, um, you know, it, it is a... Like, the terrain is, is all shown there. You know, you've got Plum Run there and the Valley of Death. That rocky terrain is, is well represented uh, as rocky terrain. Woods are clearly woods. You've got the farms, uh, you know, labeled the various farms and stuff. There's the wheat field. It's an open field. Um, orchards and stuff are shown as different from wooded terrain. There's the angle. Do they actually list the cops of trees on there? No, just the Bryan farmhouse, the angle, and then, you know, Cemetery Ridge, various places. This has, as you can see, there's um, like these sort of arcs and stuff on the board and position of artillery with these little arrows and stuff pointing everywhere. All that is related to gameplay. Um, it's not like historical markers or anything like that. It just shows how, how the game in particular, uh, how, how artillery and things like that and these particular spaces, how they function. Um, so and it may be that the artillery is entirely represented on the map as opposed to any of the blocks representing artillery. I may be misremembering that, but that's why I feel like there are the guns kind of printed on the map. I may be wrong about that, though. So, but, you know, I mean, the the graphic design on the map, I think, is good. Uh, the turn tracks and stuff are good. You know, the 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 graphic design here, the little corners cut out, um, you know, are evocative of a military-style map. Like, you're looking at a military-style map. I think the intention is to evoke a sense of a military map. Um, I'm thinking that, that this the way the elevation and stuff is shown and landmarks and stuff are shown make me think a little bit of the Mark Herman C3I Gettysburg map over there where they're taking, like, hey, this is a historical map, you know, that somebody may have had at the time of the region that showed local farms and terrain and elevations and stuff on it, and we have, you know, adapted it to a military purpose. Um, that's the feeling that I get from from this 
particular map for the guns of Gettysburg. So not, I, I think, I think the terrain and artwork on the map is good. I just think the colors could have been, could have been better, could have been a little more varied, um, created a little bit more, I don't know, of a, of a canvas of color, uh, to look at, uh, representing the terrain of Pennsylvania and that particular time, which would be lots of, you know, dry, if it was fields that are going to be closer to brown than green, basically, um, in that particular era, and grasses and things like that, that'll be closer to brown than green. So moving on to the final one mapper that I have, this is from the Clash of Giants Civil War game, which also includes um, Second Bull Run, but this in particular is Gettysburg, this is a Ted Racer game from his Clash of Giants system, and uh, right away, anybody who's looking, anybody who's familiar with Gettysburg, and I can get to it from the, the typical looking from the south to the north vantage point, anybody who's familiar with Gettysburg, and you can see there was a, an errata printed out for the map where the, like, ridge line for the sunken road should be on this side, closer to Cemetery Ridge, so that's what this little correction represents, um, I haven't actually affixed it to the map. I'm not sure why I didn't print this on label paper. Usually for map errata, I will print it out on label paper and then cut it out very exactly and stick it to the map so I don't have to worry about it. I didn't do that here. I may have been out of label paper at the time. Um, so, you know, one of the most annoying things in Wargaming is map errata. Uh, <laughs> especially if it, if it seriously affects play, then they have to do some sort of... Um, you know, correction that they print out for it. Uh, you'll see something similar um, when I get to do my coverage of the uh, uh, Last Chance for Victory map, which also had that, that there. It wasn't map errata. Um, they printed out a correction to improve map accuracy, which I'm all for. Um, it wasn't something where they screwed something up and printed something wrong. It was somebody pointed out, hey, there was actually a gap between the trees here that could be militarily significant in the game, so they gave people a chance to fix it. Um, that kind of thing I endorse. Uh, so right away, if you're looking at, you know, a typical view of Gettysburg, looking from the south where Big Round Top and Little Round Top are, um, you'll notice, okay, yeah, so this would be Seminary Ridge and McPherson's Ridge. Um, and what the hell is this? There's like a, like a canyon here that goes on for one, two, three, four, five, six hexes. Uh, well, <laughs> that is the railroad cut, the infamous railroad cut. Yeah, there goes the unfinished railroad. Um, this is like the weirdest representation I've ever seen of <laughs> that railroad cut, which in a game at the scale that this is, um, the actual militarily significant portion of the railroad cut would be, you know, in terms of, like, where soldiers got trapped and had to surrender, would be, like, part of one hex. And yet somehow it's turned into a Grand Canyon that stretches for six full hexes in this game. <laughs> so I'm not sure when somebody asked Ted Racer, why, is the, why did the railroad cut turn into the Grand Canyon? He said, well, people wanted to see it on the map. You know, people would expect to see the railroad cut. And I was like, well, they expect to see it represented as it was historically, which would not be stretched, you know, a, an a impossible-to-escape canyon uh, that stretched between two entire ridges. Uh, that's not at all what it was. It was, you know, like 60 or 70 feet of... of kind of this difficult to escape section that a bunch of troops piled into and realized they couldn't get out of and had to surrender. It was not a, you know, complete scar through vast stretches of the Gettysburg terrain. So very strange. Um, so this map, again, this is a simple, very functional Gettysburg map, it's also very green, uh, you know, um, all just kind of shades of green, except for a few spots where there's some browns, uh, and they even made the wheat field, like, 
gold. Like, hey, there's actually wheat here. Although, weirdly, it looks like the wheat field is like on a ridge here, which is not, I mean, I, part of it was kind of. I mean, the Hawks Ridge ran along here. Um, and then you had the Stony Hill, which was part of the wheat field, weirdly positioned where the peach orchard is. I don't know. It, the kind of geography of this map is a little strange to me in terms of where, like how things actually are. Um, you know, Cemetery Hill, Culp's Hill, Hill doesn't feel like it's de like due east of Cemetery Hill, but is slightly to the northeast. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, this was strange to me. I mean, I've, I've, I've played this game. Uh, I thought the game was pretty good. Um, I enjoyed it, but the map is a little strange for a Gettysburg map for me. So it, some of those little the elements of the map kind of took me out of it, especially just the giant railroad cut canyon. I mean, <laughs> yeah, people expect, people expect in a tactical Gettysburg game to see the railroad cut, they don't really expect to see it on a single map treatment of the game. So, yeah. Um, you know, if you want to look at what it should look like on a tactical map, if you can see due to the glare where these red hexes are, yeah, that's where the railroad cut was in effect. And on this map, on this scale of map, all of that would be like in, you know, part of one hex right here. So, just the dangers of, you know, dealing with shifting scales between uh, games. So, yeah. But, you know, not not an, a, an ugly map. I don't hate any of these maps. Um, they all have good and bad things about them. Um, there are just some that I happen to like more than others. And uh, we'll get into the ones that I really like um, in uh, future videos on some of the big, the big monster tactical maps. Coming soon.